Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goal, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter, brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon with Doghouse Systems. Don't forget about your alts you need to cherish Each and every little character you've got No matter what level they're at Don't forget about your alts you need to cherish Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MMO Reporter. This is episode 289. I'm Chris and as always I am joined by the ever so uh, eviscerated... Mr. at MMO Bill. Hello, Bill. I hope I hope you're feeling okay. I was going to say, I was going to assume you were going to call me the ever so healthy. No. Seeing as how I'm the only one in the entire show that could make that claim. That's true, because I am, I, we, I, there was parts of me today that were thinking, maybe today's not a recording day, but no, we persevered. We came through and we are going to knock out a great show because we have got a ton of news that is causing you to type so ever so quickly. I love your mechanical right. keyboard. Um, it's not a mechanical keyboard. Oh, you just attack it that heavy? Wow, okay. I'm not even attacking it. I think my microphone's too good. I think yeah, that's it, the real that's problem. Really, that's really what it is. It, it almost sounds actually, now that I'm mentioning it, it almost sounds like we're on the wrong mic. You think? I a little bit. I do. I do um, think a little bit. I know Zencaster's on the correct mic, so maybe we got it's that. Just, uh, not to get down into the weeds too far right. here. Well, we'll make it maybe, work. It'll be exceptional. It'll be wonderful. Maybe Discord is broke. Is wrong. It'll be. It'll be fantastic. It'll be wonderful. Uh, let's get into what we've been doing in game. No matter which mic you're on, Bill, I'm sure that you have some great stories to tell about your gaming experiences this past week. Well, uh, absolutely, I do. Uh, it's uh, it's been a Guild Wars two heavy week for me. Actually, I've been getting into uh, farming up. I, I I'm totally six months behind on this now, but I've been farming up winter berries in the bitter frost uh, bitter frost peaks mm -hmm. for the most part to start with, and. It's, uh, it's, I, I've got enough that I was able to get my Ascended Breather for my Thief. Nice. So, which is the big expensive one. That was the 500 berries, 6,000 right. magic. Yeah. And I also just got a ring, an Ascended Ring for my Thief as well, yeah. too. My, my Thief is very Ascended light. So I've decided I'm going to try to pick off some of the low-hanging fruit for, uh, for ascended gear, so I can maybe use that dude to run some fractals and do something maybe a little bit more advanced. But really, yeah. just to kind of, I needed, I needed to set a new goal in Guild Wars. I was a little bit uh, behind in, I, like, I was just eight, wandering aimlessly, doing yeah. Auric Basin and well, randomly I'm, I'm glad and. You have some goals now. Yep, yeah, that, and I need to grind up some gold too, but. There is that. It's, uh, that's secondary. The main thing is to get some ah. ascended gear going and try to get back on track with making legendaries. Yeah. Which could happen someday, sometime someday. in my lifetime. It's possible. Someday over the rainbow. No, I can't yeah. sing today. Oh, oh, yeah. I got no voice. And I also did um, World of Warcraft. So I've basically just been plugging away at my regular cycle of doing the world quest mm -hmm. uh emissary quest and that kind of thing um i did uh we did a on our wednesday night stream which where you were uh not there we did the nighthold raid on yes, normal sad. yeah we we hooked up with uh darren's guild and ran that uh i healed terribly like embarrassingly bad 
Yeah. Uh, not so much that I was healing badly because I was actually keeping up with, uh, uh, well, not all the other healers. The 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 actual the 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 tank healers were obviously mopping the floor with me, but the secondary healers I was keeping up with them when I wasn't dead on the floor, which was a lot. Aww. So. So that was a lesson. Uh, discipline priests are not raid friendly. I'm, I'm actually fairly confident to say that dungeon running, discipline priests are fine. In fact, you could even say they're good because right. uh, especially if you're trying to do speed runs, uh, the extra uh, 100k DPS uh, from, a, from your priest mm -hmm. or from your healer is actually going to be helpful. I right. mean, yes, because it's enough to keep everybody up, which is obviously the most important thing, yeah. but it's also just a little bit of a DPS boost. And actually, as my gear is getting better, the, the, I'm actually putting out closer to 200k DPS on my healer wow. rather than 120 or 130, which is what it was to begin with. So, so... Yes, I, I, Discipline is, I think, my favorite spec. I started off Shadow, and I still like that, but I think Discipline is my favorite now. Yeah. But rating-wise, it's tough. It's suboptimal. Aw. So, well, it'll be a little bit better a when I... Well, i experience. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a little bit better when I know the fights right. better. Yeah. I might try to even LFR heal it so one of these days and see what happens, see if right. I can get myself kicked. Yeah. <laughs> so... Oh. Excuse me. Oh, well, oh, you yeah. were trying to kick me, weren't you? You can't I kick might. me from the podcast, Chris. Oh, darn it. I tried. Oh. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, how about you? What, what kind of excitement did you get up to? Uh, I actually, I think the most exciting thing that happened for me this week was I actually jumped into Lotro, and uh, I streamed for a little bit and recorded uh, Update 20, which is the Battle of the Black Gate. And cool. I think the most exciting thing for that, and I've, I've been jumping back in uh, probably more than I have in a while, uh, back into, uh, into Lotro. Um, I did a little bit of questing, but I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here in the video to show people. Uh, but I actually got to the Black Gate. And nope. I, I was astonished. I was amazed. I was flabbergasted. I was awestruck. Um, this is probably the most uh, impressed, for lack of a better term, that I have been with something that Turbine, or, sorry, Standing Stone Games, formerly known as Turbine, um, has put together ever. Like, I, I'm yeah. walking up, and it's just the most intimidating, imposing darkness of the black gate and even isengard didn't do this for me like it was just it was amazing it was outstanding so i've got that on video i'll put a link in the show notes so you can see my 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 gob smacked uh hmm. reaction and i did try to run up to the gate and i was killed automatically just by dread well like oh. literally i died of <laughs> dread Oh, I remember dread deaths in Lotro. That's yeah. uh, that's a special, special experience. I yeah. remember the very first dread death I think I ever got. We were up in. We were trying to cruise through Angmar. Angry Mar. And they had those. Yeah, Angry Mar. That's where the term Angry Mar came from, actually. And yeah, we just got too close to those statues, and it was just instant death. Yeah. And I remember raging about that. That was that was the Angry stupidest Mar. thing I'd ever heard of in my life. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, memories. Oh, the memories. Uh, so that was a ton of fun, and I really enjoyed that. But I also have, even though I wasn't there for Wednesday night, I did make it into WoW, and uh, I did stream some dailies and some mythic runs and stuff like that and running around in World of Warcraft. I'm now up to, I've got my second legendary, uh, which is oh, a really great two, tanking huh? one. Yeah, shut up, you. You've got your third. You didn't even mention that. I'm okay with that. You don't have to mention it. Um, okay. But uh, I got a nice tanking one that gives me a nice, uh, I think it's 15% of my health bubble. Yeah. So every 30 seconds. So that's nice. That's going to help. So I'm up to 869. I know you're in the 70s. Are you in the 80s yet? 880 something? Uh, I'm at 879 right now. Okay, so you're 10 I, ahead I, of me. Got, I got the exact same legendary you did. Yeah. Which is, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's better for a tank than it is for a priest, but yeah. it's better than, it's ever so slightly better than one of the things I was using for for discipline anyway. So yeah, it's it's it'll be it'll it's a slight upgrade. So yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm hovering around 880. I'm just just that close, not quite though. Yeah, I need one or two more decent upgrades. Well, that's great for you. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm a little jealous, just yeah. a little bit jealous. Well, we're gonna. There's gonna be some news coming up here pretty soon that should help you out here. Yes. We'll talk about that after yes, the after the break here. Yeah. Um, before that, though, uh, I did also play Horizon Zero Dawn, which was actually uh, a, a birthday present for me. My 40th birthday was a little while back, so I jumped mm-hmm. into Horizon Zero Dawn. I think I'm in love. Uh, I think this is my favorite open world RPG that I've ever played. I really enjoyed Final Fantasy uh, 15, um, but this just it it just the design of the world, the immersion of the world. I know they're completely different styles, but this is mm-hmm. so outstanding. Uh, the combat is fun. The upgrade system is fun. The leveling system is fun. I, I'll try and, and create a longer video that uh, goes over sort of everything about it but uh yeah it's it's absolutely fantastic and i would say bill it's probably mm-hmm. a pretty good reason to get a ps4 you know i'm it's so exclusive. close to just making that jump yeah because i thought really hard okay well maybe a switch because my family is very much yeah a switch uh, a nintendo family my kids yeah. adore super mario they enjoyed wii sports they've played a whole bunch of like they're obviously 10 years behind the curve but whatever they're yeah. still doing it so anyway uh i was looking at the switch and it's it seems like a compelling console to have there's just nothing to play right now yeah so except for breath of the wild yeah. which oh my gosh yes um, yeah i very impressed with the with what i've seen of that so far like yeah. i'm not trying to complain about breath of the wild but i'm ba- i'm putting all my eggs in one basket there so to yeah. speak so yeah. i'm almost happier to kind of hang tight until the summer see what kind of other titles mm-hmm. come out uh like maybe if mario kart comes out and uh a few others then that might be a little bit more right appealing especially for as a family console yeah. but yeah ps4 i've been humming and hawing about that for so long now it might almost be time to pull that trigger I so i think horizon anybody, zero dawn any, might be a a worthy reason anybody who's uh, got a, a inside deal or something like that and let me know yeah I uh, want to send out a wonderful thank you to all of our patrons over at patreon.com slash MMO reporter for helping us keep the lights on. Uh, we sure appreciate the fact that you help us do what we do for you so that we can put out all these shows. Uh, thank you so much. If you want to help us keep the lights on, if you want to help support what we do, go to patreon.com slash MMO reporter and uh, you can become one of our patrons. Check out the rewards, check out our goals, all that sort of stuff. So again, it's over at patreon.com slash MMO reporter. So Blizzard made some waves. Uh, they announced b- that uh, their new expansion is coming out on Tuesday. Not expansion, uh, content update. Are you sure this isn't an expansion? Because it looks like an expansion. It's pretty big, isn't it? I have seen other MMOs released expansions with less than this. Yeah. So, yes, Chris is technically right, and as he so often is. But yeah, so Best patch 7.2 right. is coming out. It is not an expansion. It's a patch, but it's massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they we they we got the trailer put, came out on Friday, if I remember correctly. And it was a really good trailer. Gives some nice exposition. Uh, are we going to put it up in the show here, Chris? It or is. It's just going right throw now the link as in? we're talking. Excellent. So a little bit of exposition here. A little bit, uh, a little bit more inside uh, 
baseball on the Burning Legion and the relationship between Sargeras and Kill Jaden, and maybe just a little bit of tension going on there, and uh, a really cranky Kill Jaden at the end of the trailer, if I do say so myself. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, and this is just, it, it it's, it was a really fun trailer because it gives you just that little taste of WoW lore that if you're into the lore, it gives you just basically a whole new rabbit hole to dive down and see what's going on. And if you're not into the lore, it's still a nice exposition so you know kind of at least who the bad guy is. So mm-hmm. so that was cool. But uh, yeah, so then the patch is coming out. Uh, there's going to be a quote-unquote new zone tacked on to uh, the... Uh, legion expansion area called the broken shore now some of you are going to say wait a sec that's not new and you're absolutely right broken shore it was we landed at the broken shore during the kind of lead up quests or the startup quests uh for legion with that that was where we were the on that on rail quest chain to get you started uh, but we couldn't really do anything on that zone after that. You could technically get there and walk around, but there were no quests and everything was basically raid level difficulty. So unless you were going there with your uh, gigantic raid group, you were not lasting very long or getting very far. So uh, so that's going to be coming in. That's going to be uh, a new zone that's going to have a whole new quest line, a whole new reputation to unlock. Uh, it's so it's that's going to be a big time eater in and of itself. Um, new dungeons coming in. There's going to be a whole uh, a whole new uh, line in your class hall order or class order quest campaign. So mm-hmm. basically, the the PVE storyline, one of the storyline threads that came out in Legion, that's going to be continuing. Uh, there's going to be a whole new world quest revamp, which is going to kind of tent trend back towards the way the Legion invasion worked back before the expansion. So when they were doing their lead up to the expansion and they were doing Legion invasions around uh, different zones, the world quests are going to start to reflect that type of event a little bit more, except it's going to be far more difficult, as I understand. Mm -hmm. But they also did say that it would be, because of the scaling and the way that, that Legion is set up, you're going to be able to use this to help level your character. So your level 101 demon hunters that everybody did that first level and then went back to their main, you can now usually... I don't think it'll be as as big of a leveling push as the Legion Assaults were before the launch of the expansion, but I think it'll be pretty good. It should be better than what Legion is now, or faster anyway. So if if you've got some alts that you were itching to get up there, this is probably your chance. Though I still don't see how Legion is alt friendly like it's it's friendly for switching it's friendly for switching mains i'll give it that if you Mm -hmm. want to switch your main to one other character and they they do give you kind of a ramp up there because your your artifact power and your artifact levels can kind of uh ramp over a little bit um it there's some other boosts that you can kind of give your character and that kind of thing so it, it it that's not bad but i don't get how you could run two mains or a main and an alt or the fleet of alts that you used to be able to run in previous expansions or anything like that it just, it just doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. in legion there's too much too much to level too much going on you'd need to spend a, a, a ton of time in there to do that so yeah. anyway so that's there if so if you're looking to switch mains or if you have if you're just an excellent time manager. You could get an alt up, maybe two. I'd I'd love to hear anybody who's done be- more than that or is concurrently running like three or four alts in Legion, and I'd like to find out how you're doing it. So let us yeah, know if I you imagine. if you are doing that. But uh, uh, other stuff coming in. There's going to be a pet battle dungeon, which is just super exciting. I bet you Josh is uh, going to be pumped mm-hmm. about that. Um, we're going to have PVP brawls being added. These are going to be PVP scenarios, which kind of sound like they're going to be cyclical things. So there's going to be, uh, different venues, different rule sets. It really reminded me a lot of the Overwatch arcade. So I'm wondering if they borrowed that idea from the team down the hall or something like that. Of course, flying is going to be in there. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff like there's class balance. There's others, there's a new, uh, there's new artifact balancing. There's new artifacts actually crafting. Transmog sets too, which are yeah, kind of cool. The 
just a zillion things. The one thing that was, the, there was one little mechanical change that's near the bottom of it that I was quite excited about, and that's changing the way that tab targeting works. Yay. And this is going to be excellent for me in raids because I'm just, I basically suck. And I, I, so I, I'm a tab targeter and I'm sure that I've made things worse. I know I've, mind you, I've done it deliberately in dungeon runs with Chris, but, uh, hey. but now I'm not even going to be able to do that. So I can't ruin a dungeon just through tab targeting because the way tab targeting, targeting is going to change is that tab targeting only works for anything that's already in combat with you. So you can't accidentally tab over to something that's not in combat. Yeah. Which means that you can't accidentally pull unless you actually get your mouse, click on the thing that you want hmm. to quote unquote accidentally pull. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I guess I can't really play innocent anymore when that extra group attacks You're still us in use the dungeon. That excuse. Yeah. Oh, tab targeting's broken. That's so oh, weird. That's too bad. I'm so. really excited for all this. I'm excited. I'm pretty close to completing my um my Pathfinder one, like my first Yeah explorer uh bit uh, i've just got mm. some some last quests to do uh and get that done um i'm excited for the new dungeon i'm excited for adding uh court of stars and arcway to the dungeon finder mm -hmm. which i think will be cool and uh, now, just good times yeah it's gonna be good now i would recommend that you just cruise around youtube a little bit there's actually been some good guides on how to get started in 7.2 and because there is so much going on there is probably a right way to get started right. a little bit um in this case the the thing that actually darren pointed out on our stream and that i've seen other people mention on on uh other youtube sh shows yeah. is that uh you don't want to be jumping straight into the new zone and world quests there because there's going to be a quest line that comes up when 7.2 comes out that allows you to level up your order hall and one of the big things about leveling up your order hall is that the final step in your order hall is going to give you the opportunity to like quadruple the amount of artifact power you get from completing artifact quests. Right. So, and because there's going to be new scaling for artifact weapons in 7.2, uh, gaining artifact power, like big gobs of artifact power is going to be very important. Yeah. So... So keep an eye open for that. Look for those guides. I, I can't give you the exact step-by-step -step here because I don't know it off the top of my head. I just know that that is a thing to be aware of. So mm -hmm. keep so check that out. But yeah, big, big patch. I don't remember a bigger patch in terms of notes, in terms of like just what's be, what's planned uh, that World of Warcraft's ever done. Like yeah. expansions, of course, that's separate. But I'm pretty sure this is the biggest that they've done. Yeah, this is... Um... This is pretty cool. I'm excited about the amount of content that they've got here and and hope that they do another one in another six months ish. Yeah. Before, well, and we'll be, they're not going to well, do yearly expansions, right? They talked about that. Yeah. So, so, well, you think about what they've done already. They did 7.1 in December, if right, I remember which had right. Kara and a couple yeah. of other things. Yeah. And I will be the first to admit that it started to get a little dry towards the end of uh, 7.1 and 7.15. They did okay, but we're getting to three months, four months. 7.2 looks like it'll probably carry us for another uh, at least three, four months because there's mm -hmm. going to be a ton to do there. I right. mean, obviously, the the good players are going to be getting through this in no time. But you and I, being the regular humans that we are, are probably going to get a lot of get months out of this. Right, so. yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Oh, I think this is and, a pretty fantastic uh, patch. If you've got some gold in your bank, buy your WoW tokens now because I almost guarantee they're going to price spike on Ugh. Tuesday. All right. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> I'm here to help. Yep. All right. From WoW to a spiritual successor of a game that uh, is from the you know, same era as uh, the original WoW launch, uh, City of Heroes was a game that you and I both played and both enjoyed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Now there's a new spiritual successor, which we've discussed a few times on the show, called Ship of Heroes that is coming out. Uh, that's actually going to have their Kickstarter starting on April 4th at 10 a.m. Eastern. And I had a chance to sit down uh, with a few of the dev team, uh, with uh, Casey McGee uh, McGeever and Matthew Wilson, uh, as well, uh, Justin Roberti was there. And we... Uh, 
basically, uh, Casey showed me around the game while Matthew was driving. And they showed me around a few different parts about the game. So I thought, first of all, um, just mention sort of what the whole idea of this demo was. There's two parts, basically, to this demo. Uh, the first part was sort of showing us around the city itself. Uh, the, not the city, the ship. Uh, this mm -hmm. one level of the city that is that is this ship. And, uh, and, and giving us an idea of what everything looked like. And, and uh, we'll have, by the way, we'll have a full uh, version of this interview uh, released separately. But this is sort of going to give you a little bit of a teaser of all the stuff that we talked about. And uh, so they, they showed us around the world in this particular level. And there's going to be 20 levels on this ship in total. Uh, it's going to launch, I believe, with one or two levels is what they talked about. And uh, this one particular level, which is sort of the, the first one, uh, had things like uh, Space Needle analog in there and the Experience Music hmm. Project and uh, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge sort of stuff in there. So it kind of all looked really, really cool. And it was uh, an interesting way to start out. And it looks really interesting. And, and they mentioned in the discussion that we had that it's built around you know, teleport and flight powers and stuff like that. You won't be able to run up the side of buildings like you could in some other hero uh, superhero games. But uh, you'll be able to teleport and fly and stuff like that. So things were built like that. So this whole game takes place on this ship. And, and possibly they talked about raiding planets and stopping at planets and stuff like that. And, uh, and taking a look around and stuff like that. So it was very interesting to get a little bit of a tour of one of the levels on this ship. So, Bill, did cool. you have any, any sort of questions about, about the game and stuff like that? Why, yes, I do. Huh. Um, <coughs> actually, first of <laughs> Hey, gee, it's almost like we planned this. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, right? Actually, first thing I wanted to ask was, uh, the, I mean, this has been kind of billed as a spiritual successor to City yeah. of Heroes, and we know that that's the design uh, philosophy behind it. How much is that coming through in the demo? Like, did it look like a new can of paint put onto City of Heroes, uh... or does it look like its own, it's turning, it's earning its own identity, or what did, what did you think uh, from has, that aspect? Definitely has some a aesthetic connections to city of heroes in the way in which things look the color palettes that are chosen very bright comic booky and stuff like that and mm -hmm. um you know uh, we look we look at the character creator later which we'll talk about in a minute but um you know it's got some some definite thematic pulls from city of heroes but it's not the same game i mean things like what we're looking at now which is you go to a window on any level of the ship and you look outside and it's space and it's 3d space the way that they've done it there is not just mm -hmm. a static map paint like well it might be a static map painting but they've curved it around so that when you look you can actually see like it's outside of the ship so that's kind of a mm -hmm. cool thing but yeah so it's it, it definitely feels like this could be what city of heroes was if it had launched today, would be if it launched today or soon. And it launched like you are, is this a spaceship <laughs> joke? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, uh, but it it definitely doesn't have like oh this is from City of Heroes. Oh this is from City of Heroes. It doesn't have that. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. So the demo itself then, what was the like? What did you actually see as you were going through the demo? Like, what's kind of the theme of it? Or uh, so it was basically giving us a tour of this one level of of the city and the character creator. Um, okay. Sort of those two parts of it. So we're taking a look at the city now. For those of you watching the uh, the video version of it. Okay. So basically, like a like getting a tour of the neighborhood or something like right, that. Right. Exactly. Or? And there's going to be twenty levels, but this was the first one that they showed us. They were just showing this one. Now, is it just a like running the character around, or do they have NPCs or 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 baddies in there? Or they anything had NPCs like that? in there, but it was just robots running around. I don't even think they had textures on them. It was all gray. Mm, okay. So this is still all pre-alpha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, looking cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, is this so? What's the deal with the ship? Like, why is this a okay. ship? Are we did 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 is Earth dead and now people just live in space or what's right. going on here? So I asked Casey about that, and this is what he had to say. In, in the current conception, does not get back to Earth, right? Okay. There are other ships. There are other planets. There are colonies. There are space stations. Humanity in this future is united because there are actually such dangerous species that view us not as, you know, other beings, but as food. So 
We've got to be constantly on our guard against dangerous aliens while we're allied with positive aliens. Right. So hmm. it's definitely a, a, a part of a greater universe that they're, that they're talking about. It's not, um, it's not just everybody's piled on this one ship. So, so that's interesting. So, are mm. the heroes on this ship then? Are they like are they some some of them people that are exceptional and other ones aliens, or are these all quote unquote humans that so are just that are just special? There's there's some human superheroes. There's some alien human um, uh, hybrids or, or or you know uh, relationships that that had some babies. And uh, one of the signature heroes that they were talking about is actually half alien. Um, and, uh, and then there's some cyborgs as well. And the part that we're looking at now in the video is, is a, a statue of two heroes. And they were the last ones that had to have a secret identity. The whole thing about this now is that heroes don't have secret identities. They're, um, they're uh, uh, revered and, and not, they don't have to hide away. Right? Hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Interesting. That's actually yeah. a neat step in that mm -hmm. trope where mm -hmm, right. the, of the secret identity to protect the ones you love kind of thing exactly. instead yeah. of... Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, how about leveling? Did they touch on that? Yeah, so it's going to be a fairly linear experience. Um, I didn't ever got, never quite got a satisfactory answer as to, you know, is it you start um, on this one level and then you work your way down the ship all the way from one because this is the top end of the ship the arc that we're looking at now is part of the uh, generator for the all the power and stuff like that also um, it also uh, creates the currency as an offshoot of this and and bill you're gonna love the name of the currency for this the, the, from this reactor are you ready for it i am unobtainium <laughs> Yeah, that was my... That's got to be a placeholder name. Eh, it didn't sound like it. didn't sound like it, but that's okay. Uh, so the unobtainium comes off of this arc, um, and the, the arc goes down through the other levels as well, and it's sort of the, the core, the end, not the engine, but the, the power producer of this ship. Um, and so uh, you are going to work through... Um, uh, the ship, I, I don't know if you're going to jump around the different levels or if you're going to work from one way to the next. What I did like about what we talked about, though, was the fact that there is going to be side kicking up. So if I've got a level 50 character I've played through and you decide to join, uh, you're going to be able to come up and play with us, uh, you know, with me at, at level 50. And if I want to come back and play with you, I can do that as well. Uh, there's the typical stuff of a level two character only has a few powers and a level 50 has plenty more. You can scale that all you want. It's still not quite the same. And you are going to get rewards for that that are appropriate for your true level. Okay. So there's there's a lot of flexibility there, a lot of a lot of pull around the building communities as well. That was a really big thing for them as well, trying to build a community to go through the leveling experience and being able to jump around a little bit more. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to scale and just go anywhere. Didn't sound like that, but it is you're going to be able to scale to other people. Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Cool. Um, what about combat? Are, are they that far yet? So did I did they, ask did them any... if there was oh. anything new about combat because there was a video a little bit uh, a little while ago. Uh, so I asked Casey about whether or not we're going to see anything new for combat. Uh, are you? Uh, I know we saw the video of the combat. Are you able to show any of the combat uh, today, or is that something for later? That's something for later. Okay. Ironically, the combat we showed was actual real combat. That is to mm -hmm. say, we packaged the game. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that, uh, with that idea, but mm -hmm. games are usually built in the engine. So you see it in the editor. You're making changes. You're doing all this stuff. What we do is at least once a week, we package the game as if we were going to sell it. Right. And then we play the packaged version. That splits it into a server and a client version. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you saw that that example of Meltdown fighting Nagdelians in Apotheosis City, that's actually one of our devs playing Meltdown against the AI. Mm -hmm. He's doing his, you know, he's actually doing it on his computer like a real player. It's not something that we jimmied together somehow. Right. It's actual gameplay. We actually had to do it uh, five or six times because... In that particular scenario, we made the Nagdelian strong, and they defeated our hero a couple of times. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so it, it's it's 
nothing new to see about about the combat or anything like that. But it did look what we did see in there was very. Uh, uh, I mean, they're still early in the animation and stuff like that, but it felt like a City of Heroes fight, right? Like all oh, the fireballs cool. going around and stuff like that. So that that's I think a good thing because combat was fun in City of Heroes. Yeah. But, well, of course, the thing that everybody loved the most about City of Heroes was just creating characters. Yes. Because that was easily the most robust thing that, uh, or the most robust character generator mm-hmm. that I think I've played anyway. Uh, did What's what's the uh, Ship of Heroes? Like, is that playing in the same ballpark oh, as City absolutely. of Heroes? Absolutely. Um, and it even, it, it even goes further and goes into sort of some of the depths of facial morphing and body morphing and stuff like that that uh black desert online did which i I think is the current king of character creators is black Mm -hmm. desert online because you can morph the skeleton underneath the skin but i think this one more than that it also has different types of eyes as well um right right now we're seeing uh, uh regular human eyes but you can change like the color and the pattern of the eyes uh not just a blank color, but actual human eye patterns, mm-hmm. uh, and, and the cha- size of the iris, pupil, all that sort of stuff. So, it amazingly detailed in what you can do, um, and it's all it's all cosmetic. I mean, it's not going to uh, do anything different to your character if you have a big muscle bound guy uh, versus a a um, a, a very uh, thin, slight uh, man or woman. They can both mm-hmm. be brawlers and fighters. You look at comics and there's stuff like that, right? Look at Jessica Jones versus the Hulk, right? They're both super strong. They're very mm-hmm. different body types. Yeah. Um, not only that, but you've got a ton of character stuff as well. I'm just sort of showing the uh, the body stuff and the face stuff that they're doing now. But they, they change things like uh, the shape of the eyes, the cheekbones, the nose, um, it, it was really super detailed in what they did. Uh, but not only that, they also showed uh, uh, some of the character creation as well uh, for costumes. Uh, so you don't have to have like a typical superhero costume. You can have a suit, for example. Uh, and I, there's a really funny comment. We talked about uh, whether or not they follow the, uh, the Incredibles uh, thought uh, hmm. line of no capes. And I'll leave that for the long video for anyone who wants to go and check that out. But we did discuss that there. So I think this is uh, an incredibly detailed character creator. The other thing that was really cool, that we're talking about the boots right now, it's actually something that doesn't happen very often, but they actually built some, not built some tech, but coded some stuff so that the pant leg doesn't just clip with whatever boots or whatever you're wearing. It conforms on the inside to whatever type of shoe that you've got, whether it's going to sit on the outside and on top of a runner or slip into a boot or something like that. So I thought that was Mm -hmm. really cool. So you're not going to see clipping, hopefully not going to see too much clipping or anything like that. So, okay. Yeah. I think it's an incredibly uh, detailed uh, character creator. Uh, and I think that uh, people are going to spend a lot of time. And there was some discussion about them releasing the character creator uh, to some of their Kickstarter backers as well for them to be able to play around with that. So, Okay, cool. Yeah. How how about uh, business model? Are they, is it a free-to-play, buy-to-play Okay, sub? so this is... This is this is that part of the show where we're going to have to talk for a little bit. So I did ask. He mentioned that it was um, that it was going to be a subscription model, and so I asked hmm. him about that, about what he thought about about bringing that into the current climate of of MMOs. I think a, probably a large portion of our listener base uh, had their ears perked up when you mentioned that it was going to be a subscription game. And not necessarily in a positive way. What do you say to those people who automatically, just at the thought of a subscription, said, "Meh, okay, thanks, next game." I hope they'll give us a look. That's what I'd say to them. But the history of MMOs is that there used to be a time when everybody thought they were going to make the replacement for World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. They were going to come out. Their game was going to be so different, so exciting, so novel, so new, or so not new that they were immediately going to get 5 million players. Mm -hmm. I think 
we've had a lot of creative people make a lot of games and everybody should understand nobody's going to displace World of Warcraft. That's right. not on the table. Right. So that is not our objective. Our objective is to make a great game where a community can come together and have a lot of fun. And if our game has 50,000 or 100,000 players, for us, that's plenty. We don't need to get to 5 million. It's not an aspirational goal for us, not even an aspirational goal. Instead, we're looking for the quality of the experience, the depth of the experience. Some people will decide. I know already some people are going to say, I don't get it, heroes in space. To which I always say, dude, did you see Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, some of them just can't get over it, you know. Um, so the game won't be for everybody. But the right. people it's for, it should be incredibly strong and good. And yeah. that's our objective. Mm -hmm. That's our objective right there. So to me, that answer seems, for lack of a better term, incredibly naive about the current climate for gaming, especially in the MMO space. What do you think about his answer there, Bill? You know, I don't agree with you here. I, I've, I've, uh, I've been thinking about it a bit because I, these are the things I think about in my mm -hmm. spare time. And I don't hate that philosophy that, that you're designing your game to be a good game. And if their whole business model is that we can get a small audience that's and really cater to just those people like get the get a get our get a get a core set of people down build your community and be loyal to that community if they actually can pull that off that's probably a more stable way of running a game than to just throw it out free to play hope you get five million downloads and then hope that uh uh two percent of those people are to uh stick around you know, I mean, that that's, that's, uh, trying to hit the home run is, that's not where MMOs are these days. There's, there hasn't been a home run MMO in a very, very long time. So mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit realistic to say, okay, we aren't going to be in seven digits of subscribers here. Let's build a game that fits five digits really well. Right. And I, I, I worry though that it's, just going to uh, fail to lack, get an audience because of the subscription, no matter how good it is. There are so many other options out there. Maybe not a superhero it's... game, but there are so many other options out there. So I actually asked them about like content release and and how how they're going to make people feel because there's there's in the current climate there's a lot of entitlement that comes with the idea of a subscription. Okay, I'm going to subscribe to something. I need to have something regular that's going to that's going to make that worthwhile. So I did ask him about that. And he and he actually went back to the business model as well. That release hope is that as I said, we'll open with at least two levels of the ship, we'll keep expanding more worlds. But actually, I would bring you back. I think maybe you're 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 channeling those free-to-play players just a little bit too much. A lot of players who play free-to-play games do it because they know there are so many great games out there that are free-to-play. They come, they do the content, they leave. Mm -hmm. That's actually not what this game's about. Mm -hmm. This game is about coming, finding the community, and having fun. So it, the analogy here would be you go to your favorite bar because you know your friends are going to be there. You have beer. You don't say, but I already drank beer, and I already saw that bar. I don't need to ever go again. Right. No, you actually, you actually go back because your friends are there and you like beer, mm -hmm. right? Your friends are there every night or every Friday night, and there's always beer there. You keep going back. The bar doesn't actually have to redecorate every week mm -hmm. to get you to come back. Right. You're coming back for the social experience and because it's fun to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're, on a, if you're on a house tour, you want to see a new house every week. But if you're going to your favorite bar where your friends are, you don't. Right. And we're much closer to that bar example. Mm-hmm. And I, well, so, I, so that's yeah. Go and, ahead. and I, I, I see where he's coming from, and I actually like that philosophy a little bit too, because oh, I, really I mean like we've it seen too. it before with other other free to play games, that kind of thing. Free to play is is good for breaking in. It's good for getting yourself seen and noticed and everything like that. But it's really not for, great for community retention. So. I understand that. Like, I, I, I don't hate where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that it's 
right and a smashing success or anything like that. I think obviously that's a thing that time reveals. But I don't hate the philosophy. I think I, I think it's an I think it's an admirable philo- philosophy to have. And if there was a philosophy that was going to work, I hope it's this one. Mm-hmm. And I I'm uh, not I'm not someone who minds a subscription for a game it's not Mm -hmm. personally that i that i i look at this and i and i i cringe a little bit it's that um i don't know of a single indie or triple a game mmo that has launched with a subscription that has retained that and hasn't had to go free to play i don't know of one and when what i worry about is that they're going to invest in this game, which I really want to play. I really want to play this game. And it's well, not going to survive because of the decisions built into the business model going into it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, history is not on the side of that model, at least right now. Yeah. But we are in a new stage for MMOs. And it's a little bit of, it's almost like a little bit of Wild West over again like I, I would argue that the MMO industry has almost had a little bit of a mini reset over the last few years mm-hmm. that the old notion of triple a uh wow replacement da, 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 that's gone that's people have accepted this is not reality but i don't think anybody has actually kind of pinned down what the new reality is so I think there's there's room for the, for this kind of optimism and this kind of uh, uh, philosophy in terms yeah. of how you want to build your game. And again, as long as their goals are reasonable, it kind of sounds like uh, like a fifty thousand subscription game is not unattainable. Now uh, the one thing I would suggest, or the one thing I'd I'd think is that if they came out with the full uh, fourteen ninety nine subscription, that uh, that's is was traditional Mm -hmm. uh i would argue that's going to be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people not necessarily because it's expensive on its own but the times have changed since the 15 dollar a month subscription really became popular yeah uh other little microtransaction type stuff has been added to people's lives like the spotify's the netflix's on top of regular cable and and stuff like that for a lot of people uh the people i think get a little bit gun shy of getting getting those nickel and dime things added on to their monthly bills. I mean, I know mm-hmm. I do, but I'm also legendarily cheap. Yes. So yes, I always that. think twice about that. But I mean, if they rolled in at a, at 10 bucks a month or even five bucks a month or something like that, I think that that would probably fly, slide right under a lot of people's radars and be like, meh, I like the game. I'm just going to pay it and probably never even think about it anymore. Yeah. Kind of like uh, what people do with Patreon for us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I do, uh, I do want to uh, encourage everyone to go check out their Kickstarter. Um, I, I think uh, it could be very interesting, and watch out for the full video of uh, the demo uh, that's going to come out later this week. So uh, from there, let's move on to our sponsors. Of course, we've got Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com/mmo reporter to check out the world's best audiobooks and uh, and some of the. The, my favorite readers, uh, I love stuff by Will Wheaton. Um, I really think that he, I enjoy uh, doing, uh, listening to any book that he is reading um, and, and a lot of other great narrators as well. And of course, Doghouse Systems, go to doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMO Reporter and they'll add a free SSD to your purchase. And our newest uh, sponsor, uh, Restream.io, which we use uh, quite regularly. We've used since before they were a sponsor. Uh, and uh, I use it right now to add our Facebook stream. So right now we're streaming to Facebook and YouTube and Twitch all at the same time. So if you're a streamer, if you want to look at streaming to different platforms, Restream is the way to go. And for a long time, uh, we actually used it uh, for free. And they had some really great services that you could check out uh, for absolutely no cost. Uh, and uh, and that was really fantastic. We could uh, stream to Twitch and YouTube at the same time. But they've got some extra uh, things that you can add to it. For example, if you want to double uh, the amount of uh, Twitch streams. So if you want to do two Twitch streams, you've got two different 
Twitch channels for whatever reason or to YouTube channels. Uh, you can do that for four ninety nine a month. Or if you want to do custom platforms and, and stream to an RTP MP, which is what we're doing for Facebook, they've got that available uh, for $15 a month for each additional uh, RTMP that you want to stream to. Uh, it's really super easy to use. Uh, I've been using it myself. Really enjoyed it. So just go check it out, restream.io, and use the coupon code MMOreporter, and you'll get 35% off your first purchase that you make at that site. So go check that out over at restream.io. Oh, that boss, when your healer yells out of mana. Pull that world boss out of party Run through trash, you'll be sorry Take a bio break without announcing They may not rhyme, but they're quite possibly he Dumbest ways to die Dumbest ways to die So, Rift actually came out with a bit of a producer's letter, a bit of a post-mortem on how uh, how the expansion launch has gone and where they are with uh, version 4.0 and everything like that. And uh, it's they actually it was a little bit unique. There was a couple things in this letter that uh, I hadn't seen before. So, mm-hmm. uh, what did you think, Chris? You, you, Rift is your historical yeah. playground what's what what do you, what are you picking up from uh, from this producer's letter so it kind of had two parts to it first of all it was kind of uh, a mea culpa for the lack of end game content with the expansion which i found even mm-hmm. before i hit level 70 i was starting to get a little starved for content um and then also some of the the newer con like stuff that they wanted to push out has been hampered by a few different things. First, they had a huge hardware failure where uh, basically they couldn't work for three or four days because they couldn't put anything into uh, the game files, right? It's uh, When you're doing game development, everything is based on servers, right? So you're you're working on something and then it goes on to the game, uh, the, the storage and stuff like that. So they had huge hardware failure and uh, it was catastrophic is the way that they put it. And so that delayed them for a few days. And then um, they had several teams where people were gone for four or five days because they got the flu. A uh, really nasty flu went through the, the, the studio. And then finally they moved to, to a new offices uh, from, uh, from where they were uh, when I went to visit them to a new place really close by. It's odd to me that we hear about any of these but the well the moving i mean that was they weren't doing a few things for a couple days you know they weren't going to be able to communicate as quickly the hardware failure oh yeah something happened that's pretty big deal i've never heard a company say oh yeah we were really sick um so (laughs) i'm sorry we just couldn't get the game done and it's weird it's a hundred percent i wouldn't even say likely it's almost it's a certainty that other games have been hit by massive flu wipeouts and everything like that, and it happens to everybody. And uh, it's kind of interesting that they actually call it out. Like it's in the past, it's almost like people were like, I think there's a bit of a stigma about saying, "Yeah, I got sick and I missed some work." That uh, at least in the Western world, that that's a that's a terrible thing to have done. Like how, how, how wimpy are you that you actually missed work because you were sick? And that's just one of the stupidest things ever because <laughs> you, you only make yourself sicker by pushing yourself past yeah. what your body is saying. Lie down right. and sleep, you dumb piece of... Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, anyway, I mean, I, I can absolutely have sympathy for that. I've been laid flat with a cold this year already. I've had, uh, had stomach flu and everything like that. And, no, I'm sure as hell not going to work. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I love my job and I'm happy to work and everything, but I'm certainly not going to go sit at my desk and puke in the garbage can and then get back to work or anything like that. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. help anybody. No. Anyway, I, I thought that was interesting. That was a... Uh, that's a... a I mean, it's it's a level of honesty, I guess. And mm-hmm. like I said, for something that's got a bit of a stigma on it anyway, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
But what the most of the letter was, was a fairly substantive list of things that they're working on right now. They're going to be coming up in the future. Uh, first mm -hmm. of all, um, 4.1, the new patch after uh, Starfall Prophecy, uh, is going to introduce eternal weapons. These come with an involved and long quest line to upgrade them to something truly epic for each calling. That's kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, planar crafting revamp, yes, please. New 10 man raid, Tartaric Depths, uh, which will have the looking for raid feature. Um, I just can't help but think of like the fish and chips raid. <laughs> I get it. Uh, that would have been the last expansion, thank you. Um, mm. Which was all underwater. Uh, new yeah, weekly they, quests they in really the works. missed the boat on that one. Ha, a little ha, bit ha. intended. Ha. Uh, new weekly quests, Carnival coming up, and then uh, they're, they're going to work on update 4.2. Um, and <laughs> there, they're going to get a new level 70 zone, which is going to have some more end game content. Um, very similar to what they did with the original game with Ember Isle. And then the Dendrome for Storm Legion, uh, Tyrant's Throne for Nightmare Tide, and Plain Touch Wilds and stuff. Uh, so mm -hmm. the new zone is going to be called Vostajar, Vostagar Peaks. And it's going to have some high-end zone content and even elite area for level 70 groups, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think the one thing we want to talk about is Rift Challenges. So they, they have a, a couple of paragraphs here talking about how they, they were thinking, well... Rift, okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to go into my silly voice. Rift used to be so hard. It was so awesome when it was hard. We should make Rift hard again. Um, which basically got them to set up a server for internal testing and bumped everything up to 11, and they had fun. But then they thought, well, what if we have different rule sets where everybody's super buffed for a while? So this got them to thinking, and they came up with the idea of Rift Challenges, which they're going to open up these servers, and it's still early in development, but they're going to open up these servers with these different rule sets and have a specific goal in mind. And if you meet that goal as a server, you're going to get uh, rewards for your live server characters. Or I don't they didn't say if the specific goals were going to be for the server or for the characters. But uh, there's going to be some rewards for your live server characters, which I think is super cool. Bill, hmm. what do you think? It's, I don't know. It seems like I, I'm a little bit torn on this because it, it almost feels like one of those things that quote unquote people ask for and then they don't realize that they don't actually want. And it feels like it's just one of those things that's going to be wasted effort. Well, like, EQ progression it, it, servers it, are quite popular. It reminds me of, well... Yeah, but I mean, I, when you look at the precedent, though, you look at World of Warcraft, for example, they've got a hard, fast stance to say, nope, this is the game we made. We made every change on purpose, and this it's all it was all to answer problems and issues that we identified, and we think this is the best product we can put out. To back away from that is to, it's like almost forking your own game to, like, to use a, a open source development term. Yeah. Uh, pardon me if that... Anyway, it, it, it feels like you're 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 basically making a whole bunch of extra work for yourself, and, and it's almost like second guessing what you did before. And if you're going to second guess, why don't you second guess in the whole game, mm -hmm. like instead of just creating this little experimental offshoot that could wind up being uh, that at best scenario you're going to split your population out and you're now maintaining two different games. But I think I don't know. limited I, I, I guess it, time set. With, so think of it like a Crowfall campaign. Oh, you've got you this see, limited amount of time to do this thing in this other server, and then you come back to the main server. See, that I don't hate. I, th I actually kind of like that idea that if it's a fixed thing or if a tournament-type style thing mm -hmm. or achievement style thing, you've got, okay, you've got three months to get all the way through progression from an empty server where every mob hits twice as hard as right. it ever did before. Yeah. Go. It's like a new game and, plus, right? Yeah. So if that's and if you, as long as you're keeping the changes simple, then that's probably good. But is it, but again, that's what I what I'd be worried about is the is that forking experience where uh, your main game gets depopulated 
but not completely depopulated because the fork is popular. So now what do you do? Do you just go completely over to the fork? Do you, uh, or do you maintain these two underpopulated versions of your own game? Because Rift is not exactly overpopulated to begin with anyway, no. right? No. I think, I think it's going to be a good thing. I think if, as long as they approach it from that limited time, almost like a festival sort of, hey, go over and do this stuff over here, and you might get some cool stuff in your main character. I think it could be cool. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. All right, let's move on to our quick mentions. First of all, uh, Final Fantasy is going to be doing some data center moves. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes if you're a Final Fantasy XIV player and are interested in this. Uh, basically, they're moving data centers. Uh, there might be some issues, but in the end, they're hoping it's better. That's why it's a quick mention, because that's pretty much all the news. All right. Done. No discussion on that. Uh, if <laughs> you are a Lotro as... player, well, that's it's pretty straightforward, right? I, I mean, I like data centers, but that's got to be one of the most boring yep. headlines. Yep. But it's yeah, important good. for uh, Final yep. Fantasy fourteen players. Yes, it is. Uh, it Lotro is. players, if you want to get into the Spring Festival, there will be a new mount. Oh, my gosh, I have to get into a festival again. I haven't done festivals in Lotro in probably two years because I find them... The same now. So uh, I'm going to have to go back into this festival because i got a new mount to get. So I'll be playing the Lotro Spring Festival. Bill, are you going to jump back into Lotro? I would like to and me, no, really, Thank honestly. You. Thank you. I hope so. I would like to. But, yes, yeah. uh, Update 20 is fantastic, by the way. Absolutely, I fantastic. believe it, and I and yeah. that's really tempting for me to get back into. But then I think that I, everything I got to go through to get caught up, and I just mm -hmm. yeah, it's on the list. Yep, totally understand. Uh, and last but not least, uh, not only are they bringing back Super Adventure Box, Super Adventure Festival is coming. Uh, not a lot of news, but uh, it's going to begin on March 30th and end on April 20th, and you're going to get to go into Super Adventure Box. Thanks, Moto, for bringing it back. You're awesome. Yep, I'm pretty excited. Are you going to Are you going to play some Super Adventure Box? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is on my list. I have these old leftover coins and tokens and everything like <laughs> that from from yeah. previous Sabs, and yeah. I would like to be able to cash them in for something mm -hmm. if oh if only to just reclaim that bank space yes uh i do have to say uh we talked a couple weeks ago about the we love fine uh merchandising deal with uh, guild wars 2 and the stuff that they have for this mm -hmm. is kind of awesome i kind of want that mouse pad <laughs> i kind of really want it yeah so if anybody's looking for a late christmas present for me or late uh, birthday present for me i did turn 40 super adventure mm. festival pretty awesome You're and the so shirts old oh shut up bill like so old uh-huh the shirts are pretty cool too in a bunch of different colors I, I i don't often mention merch but it's pretty darn cool yeah and i kind of want it but uh yeah that's it for our quick mentions bill uh i'm going to be playing some lotro next week uh getting through update 20 and hopefully getting a video out about that and a podcast episode out about that and then playing some WoW on Wednesday and, and regularly. And then I've got to get through Horizon Zero Dawn because that game is freaking awesome. Here's a question for you, Chris. Uh -huh. The title of the game, Horizon Zero Dawn, yeah. does it actually make sense in the context of the game? No because clue it makes yet. no sense out of the context of the no game. Clue. Like I, I look at that title, I have no idea what that game's about. Like it's not about even one. Horizons with Zero Dawns. Except that's not really. What about the it's... Northern Horizon? So what is it? Is it is it space then? Like should, like I think when I think of a horizon with no dawn, well no the moon is the the moon does have a dawn so anyway unless you're on the dark side of the moon I guess. That's a good album. But maybe you're on an asteroid floating through space that has no sun. Hey Bill, what are you gonna play next yeah? week? Yeah, well sure as hell not Horizon Zero Dawn. That's just, no, just kidding. Just kidding. No, they, the game does look compelling, but it does have a stupid title. Um, I will be playing Guild Wars 2. Like, speaking of stupid titles, <laughs> I never really understood why Guild Wars was the name of the game, but that's an old drum that's probably been beat to death a million times. Uh -huh. um, I will be playing Guild Wars 2. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I've just found a couple of nice farms that are... That I, 
have some goals that I like that I'm enjoying, and I just you know I've, I I haven't been playing Guild Wars two as much as I've been playing World of Warcraft lately. Right. And I like combat in Guild Wars two much better than I like combat in World of Warcraft. Okay. World of Warcraft has a lot of good qualities. I like the systems in it. I like yeah. uh, the polish of World of Warcraft. I like yeah. that they, they, they definitely have very clear progression. You always know what you're working towards in World of Warcraft. It's yes, you do. basically big flashing signs saying, go here, basically. Uh, but the one thing I've always liked better in Guild Wars 2 is the combat. It's just a little bit more fluid. It feels like you've got a little bit more room for creativity. Um, it's... It's fun, and any time I take a little bit of a break or a slowdown from Guild Wars 2 and then come back to it, I'm really reminded of that. They yeah. hit such a nice uh -huh. niche in there between tab targets and attacking and uh, reticle type attacking, where where you attack where you face and that kind of thing. When they so, uh, when they release that for consoles, I'll play the crap out of that again. I still Guild really Wars like 2? Guild Wars 2. I really do. It's just yep. not high enough on my on my interest list. I it is a game, you know, if, as someone who hates consoles and, and is basically a console racist, I, I'm willing to admit that, uh, I could see Guild Wars 2 fitting on a console. Uh-huh, really nicely. Yeah. yeah. Now, that said, I wouldn't want them to take an ounce of de de development away from PC Guild Wars 2 because that's where I'm, I'm always huh. going to prefer to play it. <laughs> but I could see it fitting on a console. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so I will be playing that. We'll be doing my my token World World Warcraft stuff. I'm disappointed now that my legendary, uh, what what do they call it, the bad luck insurance or yeah. whatever it's called, has been reset so that I could get that Prydaz. Yeah, the, which the, is the no shield. good for you at all. It's it's okay. Like it's not the worst, but it's it's, it's great basically for me. it's it's a high stat item for me. Like yeah. it's the the stats are more valuable than the shield, for yeah. example. Yeah. So, but anyway, it should be funny with us running through the dungeon, and we've got two bubbles running around all <laughs> the time. Yes, it so. will. All right, Bill. If people yeah. want to tell us their funny stories of running around in WoW, Guild Wars Two, Lotro, or any other game, or they want to talk to us about uh, some of the different stuff we discussed today, how can they get a hold of us? Well, they can visit our website over at MMOReporter.com. They can send us an email to MMO.Reporter at gmail.com. They can visit us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MMOReporter. They can tweet at either of us, either at MMO underscore reporter or at MMO Bill. Uh, you can give us a call at 616-666-6778. Uh, you've got us on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Network. Patreon, if you're looking to help us uh, keep the old show rolling here, uh, head over to Patreon.com slash MMOReporter. Yeah, throw some spare change our way. We would love it. It would be fantastic. Yes, would. Uh, and finally, if you're not a uh, Patreon kind of person, head over to MMOReporter.com for other ways you can help us out. Awesome. Well, thanks, Bill. As always, it was a blast to record with you. Always fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, likewise. And always fun to have some people in the chat room hanging out with us as we talk MMOs. Thanks to everyone who came out as we recorded live. But thanks to all of you who downloaded the podcast, the audio version, watched on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are consuming the show. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We really appreciate it. We hope that you come back next week. But of course, we hope to see you in game. Don't forget about your old you need to cherish each and every little Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at MMO. MMOReporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash MMOReporter. Thanks everyone and see you in game.